Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. to a special edition of Air Gun Detectives. Today, we're going to take the mystery out of these bipods and the rails. I'm going to show you how to install them. And number one, I'm going to tell you why it works. But before we get started, I got some uh, pretty exciting news. Um, I'm launching my website. So my website is now available at www.airgundetectives.com. On that website, what are we going to have? Well, we're going to have our reviews, we're going to have some articles that I'm putting together, and we're going to have some little accessories for you guys. For instance, we're going to have the bipod kit. I just got um, a few sets of those in, and I'm hoping to have a little more here in the future, but there'll be an opportunity for you guys to purchase those um, at a pretty minimal price. In addition to that, I am so excited. I just got these in today. These are our official Air Gun Detective t-shirts. We've got the, the 1911 on the front there we've got the bat or the uh, flag on the right hand sleeve we got that in gray and in black we have our air gun detective star on the front and then we got our love mascot nitro on the back displaying the flag and then we have the flag on the right uh, side of the shirt and to be honest with you it's taken me months to find the right shirts for this because I really wanted a high quality shirt that was going to be really comfortable and fits well and uh, I would say we did that so check out the website it's going to be fun to go on there I'm going to be putting different type little products on there we'll have different articles and you can always see our reviews on there too okay so let's talk a little bit about uh, the bipod shooting you know there's some uh, skeptics out there that um, tell you, oh, well, air guns don't shoot very well off of uh, bipods. Um, you only can shoot them using the military hole. That's just not the truth, okay? The truth is, every air gun that I have put on bipods shoots much better. And I have over 30 different models, and I'm going to show you all these models as we're talking, and they're going to rotate through. And pay attention to them of where the rails are. You can always freeze the video and uh, see specifically where the rails are on if you have that specific type of gun. Um, but anyway, let's talk about why this works so well. Those of you don't, that don't know, your brake barrels and your under levels, they work with either a spring or a gas piston. And how that works is when you cock the gun, there's a piston in the chamber here. And that piston goes towards the back of the gun and locks into the sear, okay? so. You've heard the term reverse recoil. Now I'm going to explain to you what a reverse recoil is. Because any time that you fire a center fire gun and you fire it, the recoil comes backwards because it's an explosion and the gun drives backwards. This is different. So as I was saying, when you cock it, the piston comes to the back and it's locked into position with the sear. When you actually release the trigger, it releases this piston. What happens is the piston goes flying forward in this chamber it's creating pressure, high amounts of pressure. But this piston goes flying all the way up in, in dead ends into the end of the chamber and it bounces off the end of that chamber. So you're getting a reverse recoil. So when you fire this gun, it's actually throwing the piston forward. So you're getting a recoil that goes in a reverse direction. So it goes forward, but then it hits and bounces back a little bit. So you kind of get a recoil that goes forward and back. But what happens here is as this piston comes forward it compresses the air in this chamber when it compresses the air in this chamber it then creates the pressure to push the pellet out of the barrel the problem is you have to hold this gun steady through the entire process because unlike a rim fire gun the pellet does not leave this barrel before you're getting the recoil so in other words if you pull the trigger this hits starts to come back before that pellet's even out of the barrel. So you need to hold the gun as steady as possible through the entire recoil. What helps if you're target practicing? These bipods. Unbelievable. Because it's holding this gun in that steady position. What's great is these are really, and it took me a while to find the right bi bipods for you guys, but these work great. They actually fold either backwards or bi-directional or forward so if you wanted to fold this thing up because you want to go hunting then that's that's what you could do you just fold it up 
So you can carry the gun around like this, or if you want to move it back the other direction, you can do that as well. Um, these are also adjustable. They go from 9 to 11 inches, so you can adjust this. If you're on an uneven service and you want to level out your gun, that's fine. But you can use these for, uh, obviously, target practice. You can use these for hunting. Um, there's no limit. But it makes a really, really solid base for firing your gun. Now notice on the Gamo rifles, anytime I put these rails on, you want to put it towards the more solid part of the stock. Well, the Gamo rifles like them behind the bolt here because that's the thicker that's the thicker part of the stock right here so we have a little bit more to screw into but I'm going to show you um, the complete process of how to install these and whether you're putting it on a wood stock or a synthetic stock ie plastic stock it's all the same it doesn't make any difference it just sets up a terrific um, uh, base for these when you're firing these rifles so, and it's very limited to install these, this, this kit, let me show you real quick what it comes with. And uh, it comes with each of your bipods, your, your aluminum bipods that as I showed you fold in each direction. I got uh, the Picany rails, these are five slot Picany rails with a nice smooth back so they can adhere well. And these are the perfect size screws for securing these on the gun. Of course, you're going to have to drill a pilot hole, and I'm going to cover that with a 2 millimeter drill or a 564 drill. That's essential, and I will cover that in the install part. So anyway, that's what you're going to get uh, in your kit. And uh, as I said, you've seen these guns. Um, there's over 30 models that I have put these on, and it has proved the accuracy, improved the accuracy on every one of them. So stay tuned, and let's show you how to install these. Let's show you how to install these bipods. Today we've got our Browning underlever. We're going to go ahead and uh, put some uh, rails on that. Let me show you how simple this is to do it. What I would recommend, once again, I tell you this in the beginning, have a gunsmith do this, have a professional do this, unless you're not really comfortable with it, because you're doing this at your own risk. But I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process and how I do this, and been quite successful since I have these rails on almost 40 guns now. Okay, so we're going to Let's just use the browning here. Get this out of the way. Make sure you guys can see here. Okay. First question is, where are you gonna put the rails? Well, I like to always put the rail close to um, the front mounting bolts because it's the most sturdy area. You also, when you're looking for a, a spot, you need to make sure that you're looking for an area where the wood or the polymer, if it's a synthetic stock, what have you, um, is thicker. So in this particular gun, there's a, a little cutout for the main tube here, and it only goes down maybe about um, a quarter of an inch or so. So we're going to put our rail right below that. So what you're going to need for this process is some blue tape, a pencil, some type of measuring device. Um, I like the little chronometer, but a ruler, a uh, tape measure, that'll work just fine. You're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver, and then you're gonna need a drill motor, or I like the little Dremels because I have quite control with them. And you're gonna need a um, two millimeter um, drill bit, or a, gotta put the glasses on here, or a 564. So that's gonna be your pilot hole. So let me show you the process of how we do this. Got to wear these. This is what happens when you get over 50. Okay, first of all, as I was saying, we need to find a good spot to put this rail. So personally, the area that this stock is kind of um, thinner is right here at the top where it's cut out. So we're going to put that rail below this. And a good, a good measuring area would be the end of the tube right here. So we want the end of the tube to be on the center of this. So let's put a little piece of masking tape on here and I like to line this up and follow the groove of the top of the gun here and we'll line that up just like that so that gives us a nice surface to work with okay let's double check our distance here okay I want it down just a little bit farther okay Double check our distance, that's perfect. Okay, so now we want to take our rail and we want to line our rail up 
right even with this. We'll make this be the center part of this rail right here. So the way we can do that is let's just take a straight edge and mark this right across there. So now we're going to line this piece up dead center there because we want these to be symmetrical on both sides. Okay, so that's lined up nice and even there on my rail straight. Put a little mark here and put a little mark here. So there you go. So you've got where we need to put our pilot holes and this is lined up evenly. Just to save time, I already put it on the other side as well. And again, we just line this up even with the end of the tube here and then we wanted it low enough here. So now that should be symmetrical on both sides. And what I would always suggest is you double check your measurements. Measure this two, three times. Let's get this straight because you only got one shot at this. You screw this thing up, you know, your holes are going to be in the wrong spot. So I double check the width of these from my centerpiece. That looks good there. And let's double check this one here. Yep, that looks good there. Okay, so now our next step is we take our Dremel. And if you can see on this drill bit, I put a little piece of tape on this, knowing that I don't want to go deeper than really what these screws are, because it's really not necessary. So you'll get your little packet of screws here with your kit. And this two millimeter is the perfect size for a pilot hole for these. But as you can see here, we don't want to go any deeper than the length of the screw. There's just no point. So. With that, let's put some holes in this. I don't like to go overly really too fast, but the idea is just to make them straight. There we go. Put one here. And the tape also helps your drill bit from running. Here we go. I like to drill them both. I get them both done. Because then we can peel the tape off. So let's do this one. Nice and straight. Here we go. There we go. And if you go through it, that's fine. You just don't be powering, don't be powering through it and trying to drill into metal. And it's your choice whether you want to take the stock off or not. You really, it's really not necessary. You can just leave your stock on. Okay, then you want to peel the tape off. And if you'll see, we got some very clean, tight little holes drilled in there, our little pilot holes. Next step is real simple. I'm gonna set our rail on there. We get our Phillips screwdriver and you want to get these gently started. In fact, I like to lift, lift the plate up a little bit, make sure you get the nose of the screw right in there and you want to get it nice and straight. So you just want to screw this down nice and straight. Okay, before I get it all the way snug down, I like to start the second one. Again, you can see this, you want to get this screw in here nice and straight. So you line it up with a hole, you just kind of lift this rail up just a little bit to get it started. And double check before you tighten this thing up. Our rail is looking pretty straight on there. So let's go ahead and snug this set in. Okay, so now we're just going to snug this baby down in there. And you don't want it overly tight, but you want it snug because you don't want to strip your holes. Nice and snug. That's it. That's all there is to it. Flip it over and do the other side real quick.
show you again. Take our screws. These screws are uh, perfectly designed. They're the right depth. Good thread. And they countersink just perfect down into the rail here. All right. Just snug it up. That's the perfect size pilot hole. You do not want to deviate from that. You've got to give enough there you go. Now that is a solid fit. So you can see this right along here. It's symmetrical on both sides. And then, simple as this, a rail on there. and a rail on here, and we are good to go. All set. Well, we showed you how to install the rails on our under lever, and that's gonna be, no matter which air gun you have, as long as you have a smooth surface, you can find a smooth surface on the stock. That's the simple process of how you put these rails on. Just remember, um, you like to keep them, I'm gonna remind you, you like to keep it close to uh, your front forward mounting bolts because that's the most solid part of the stock and you want to keep it solid. And then remember, uh, the Gamos, the thicker part of their stock is actually behind the bolt here and that's fine. It still makes a, a nice, nice platform here and these are very secure uh, in their position. But just remember, as I've stated before, if you're not a professional, or if you're not really comfortable with doing this type of work, then don't. Wait and have a professional do it. Because you don't want to you don't want to mess this thing up by putting the holes in the wrong location or making the, the rails offset. Now if one would happen to be a little forward or back, it's still gonna balance out. But I like to double check. So I'm gonna remind you again, as I just explained to you, make sure you double check your measurements and double check each side, make sure your holes are per perfectly lined up before you put your pilot holes in there. And a reminder, two millimeter or a 564 uh, uh, drill. But again, don't do this at home if you're not comfortable in working on your own gun with this type of thing. And it's entirely your option whether you want to uh, take it out of the stock, take it apart and just have the stock there, or do it right on the gun. Um, as I said, I pretty much do them all on the gun because it's just, it's just not that difficult as you saw the process. But anyway, um, these are available on the website. Like I said, check it out. I've got um, some t-shirts on there. I've got a few other little accessories on there. So check it out. We're pretty excited about it. And um, we'll go from there. But uh, overall, terrific platform for shooting your rifle. Um, I hope this was uh, informative. hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, stay tuned to Airgun Detectives. This is where we take the mystery out of the airgun. Until next time.